Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is ink. I-N-K. Really? You bet your life! The one, the only... Groucho! Hey, that's me, Groucho Marx! Thank you. Well, here I am again with $1,000 for one of our couples tonight. George Fanneman, who's first? Just before we went on the air, we asked if there were any young people present who'd like to get married someday. And our studio audience selected Miss Mary Cool and Dr. Eugene D. McCann, Jr. And here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. So you two are in search of romance, eh? Mary, uh, Mary Cool? That's right. Cool. Oh, cool, huh? Where are you from, Mary? I'm from around Milwaukee. I was born in Wauwatosa. I had that for breakfast this morning. <laughs> why, why did you come to California? I came to see the Rose Bowl game last year. <laughs> You were a little late, weren't you, man? No, we won. Oh, you won, huh? Yes, we did. And now you're waiting for the next Rose Bowl game? That's right. And what do you do between games? I'm a secretary. And uh, Mr. McCann? Mr. McCann Jr., huh? Eugene D. McCann, huh? That's right. What does the D stand for? Does that represent anything? Oh, that's the first letter of my middle name. Well, that's better than having it the last letter of your middle name. Not mine. It is the last letter. That, that is the last letter, yes. too? It's the last... Well, what is your name? Middle well, name. Uh, I don't use it very much. Well, I won't tell anybody if you... Uh, what is it? Duddy. <laughs> Did you say Duddy? That's right. <laughs> Not Fuddy Duddy. No. Are you related to uh, Howdy Daddy? Uh, <laughs> what, does Daddy have any significance in addition to getting laughs? Uh, <laughs> this is my uncle's name. That's all I got from him. Well, I must say, he didn't leave you much, huh? <laughs> what was your reason for coming to California? I was born here. I thought maybe you were trying to get away from your uncle. <laughs> how, old, how old are you, uh, Eugene? 27. What's, you, what's your age, Mary? I was 21 on September 5th. What year? <laughs> Where do you work, John? Uh, I work at Financial Insurance Company of America. And oh, just what do you do there? Well, I am a secretary, and my job consists of taking shorthand, typing, answering the telephone... And attending conferences, taking notes. A lot of men sitting in the room? Yes, there are. It's fun, huh? Yes, it is. <laughs> Around five o'clock, I suppose, you're uh, on your last lap. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, what sort of work do you do, Gene? I'm an optometrist, gotcha. An optometrist. Now, well, what's the difference between an optometrist and an oculist and an optician? Couldn't one fellow do all three jobs? <laughs> no, they're all different licenses. Well, they're all the same to me. No matter which one I get a bill from, I still can't believe my eyes. <laughs> How did you get to be an eye, ear, and nose specialist? I have nothing to do with the uh, nose and ears, Groucho. You have nothing to do with it? No. Well, if you had nothing to do with the nose and the ears, where would you hang the glasses? <laughs> Well, uh, have you ever considered sharing an office with a dentist? You know, you could then advertise an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. <laughs> Doc, do you have a slogan? Yes. Have you got a slogan? Yes. What is it? You can't be optimistic with misty optics. <laughs> well, it's very quaint. <laughs> do you make that up yourself, Doc? That's original, yes, but uh, I happen to be an optimist also, so that... What, what do you mean you're an optimist? Well, that's the 
club that's in Los Angeles, and this is Optimist Week. Well, what is an optimist? Uh... Well, he's a member of the Optimist Club. <laughs> <laughs> They have, uh, their main interest is in the boy. Their slogan is a friend of the boy. Friend of the boy, That's huh? correct. Is there a sister club to that? Then? <laughs> now, uh, tell me, bifocals, do you work, uh, do you work for somebody or do you have your own office? No, I've been associated with my father for six years. You're lucky. <laughs> Nobody's associated with me for six years. By the way, Rimsky Korsakov, how is it? Uh, how is it you don't wear glasses? I don't need them. Well, don't look at me like that. I'm sure you've seen plenty of spectacles in your day. Huh? <laughs> Mary, do you think you could fall in love with a nice, successful, uh, young, clean-looking optometrist? Huh? Well, I don't know. I've I've just met him. <laughs> well, stop giving him the eye, or he's he's liable to charge you for an examination. Be free examination. It would be free. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Doc, would you mind looking deep into Mary's eyes and, and tell me what you see there? Huh? <laughs> the media is extremely clear. What was that? The media is extremely clear. The media is extremely yeah. clear. Huh? Still, it's been snowing in the mountains. <laughs> There's no sedimentation in the uh, anterior chamber. What did you say your middle name was? <laughs> Doc, you're about as romantic as a dish of sauerkraut. Huh? <laughs> well, you two ought to get along beautifully. An optimistic optometrist and a beautiful girl. Therefore, I now pronounce you wink and blinkin' and may you have many little nods. <laughs> now, in just one minute, you're going to work together as a team for $1,000. But right now, I want you to pay attention to some interesting advice. Now, let's see if you two will get a chance at the $1,000 question. You're going to play your bet your life. Fenneman, give out with the rules. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that 20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the $1,000 question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's going on out here. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. What question category did you select? Prominent sports figures. That's right. Now, here's your first question. You have 20 bucks. How much are you going to try? Ten. Ten bucks? In what sport, in what sport is Earl Cashel famous? <laughs> Golf. No, I'm sorry. It's tennis. Well known. I think he ranked about sixth this year in the United States. They now have ten dollars. Remember, you're going for a thousand dollars tonight, and that's the big prize. Five. How much of the ten dollars are you going to try? Five. Five. Okay. Ralph Neves, N E V E S or Nevis, is famous in what sport? Horse racing. Horse racing is right. Now I know where you put your money. <laughs> now we're on the way. They have fifteen dollars. Now I know where your money goes. Mm -hmm. Now you have fifteen dollars. In what sport are you going to bet? How much? Ten. Ten. In what sport is Bob Dillinger famous? Take a guess. Boxing. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's baseball. He's with the St. Louis Browns, I believe. They now have five dollars. Well, you've now got five dollars. You can't get married on five dollars, you know. <laughs> You're going to bet five dollars, huh? In what sport is Jim Ferrier famous? F-E-R-R-I-E-R. -E Jim Ferrier. Football, I'll say. No, it's golf. I'm going to give you one more chance to get rich quick. You answer this question correctly, I'll hand over ten dollars in cash. Who is buried in Grand's tomb? <laughs> Grand is right. Thank you. Don't go away now. You're still in the running for the big question. Groucho, the next couple has been in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know the secret word is ink. Perhaps they'll say it. Just before we went on the air, the studio audience selected a man who works for the city public health department and a housewife to be his partner. And here they come. Mrs. Emma Ziegler and Mr. Al Toribio meet Groucho Marx. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Ziegler? I'll call you Emma, huh? Where, where are you from? Uh... From 1550 West 52nd Street in Los Angeles. Is that upstairs or down? <laughs> I meant, uh, uh, where are you from originally, Emma? And I don't want to hear any nonsense about the stork, either. Right? Well, originally, 
Originally, I was born in a barn near Lansdale, Pennsylvania. You were born in a barn? That's right. Well, that was a horse on you, wasn't it, Emma? <laughs> How long have you been married, Emma? For 12 and a half years. 12 and a half years. Do you have any children? I have four kids. Hmm. You have four kids, huh? Very interesting, huh? Do you have any children? <laughs> yes, I have four children. How, how did you meet your husband? I didn't mean to be so fresh, uh, Mrs. Eagle. When we were deep sea fishing, I handed... You were deep sea fishing? <laughs> and you pulled him out? <laughs> no. He, he sort of helped me out. I handed him my uncle's false teeth. What, were you using that for bait? <laughs> had given them to me. You, you gave uh, your boyfriend your uncle's teeth? He wasn't my boyfriend with... then. He oh. was a perfect stranger. Well, did he put... And then you put the bite on him? Or... Shortly after that, you put the bite on me. Uh, Mr. Toribio? That's right, Groucho. You're from the public health department, huh? That's right, Groucho. Uh, how do you feel? I can't kick. Mm-hmm. Rheumatism? <laughs> Where, where are you from, uh, Al? Uh, city Health Department. Mm-hmm. How do you feel? Huh? <laughs> Swell. Swell, huh? Got the mumps? <laughs> I mean, what town are you from, Al? Oh, Trinidad, Colorado. How is the health in your family, uh, Mrs. Ziegler? We're all in top shape. You're all in top shape. <laughs> shape like a top, huh? <laughs> Suppose on Sunday you go out for a spin, huh? <laughs> With all those children, Emma, do you ever have a case of the sniffles or a cold around the house? Quite frequently. What do you do in a case like that? Well, one time when three of them came down at one time, I got out the sewing machine and started making dresses. You always make dresses when the kids have a cold? <laughs> it's a good time. But don't you give them any medication of any kind? Well, I did that in between the scenes. <laughs> well, you threw me that time, Emma. <laughs> Mr. Toribio, uh, how would you handle it if you came home and found four youngsters all broken out? Well, I'd check to see whose children they were first. (laughs) You have a very suspicious nature. (laughs) Haven't you got four children? Uh, three, Groucho. Well, don't come running to me with your trouble. Okay? <laughs> okay, now let's play you bet your life for a thousand dollars. Run your twenty dollars into more than the other couples, and you get a chance at the big question later. Fenneman's off stage to remind our listeners how much the first couple won. The secretary and the optometrist lost all their money, so these people have a clear field. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build your twenty dollars. What question category did you select? Movie biographies. How much are you going to bet? Oh. Ten bucks? Ten dollars. Okay. Who played the title role in Wilson? Alexander Knox. Alexander Knox is correct. Well, on the way with thirty dollars, Groucho. Okay, you've got thirty dollars. You're betting how much? Twenty-five. Who played authoress George Sand in A Song to Remember? The authoress. Was it uh, Merle Oberon? It was Merle Oberon on the nose. $55. Now, how much are you going to try of the 40? 55 40 $40. She Who played composer George Gershwin in Rhapsody in Blue? It's a toughie. He's a director in New York now, stage director. Name of... Take a stab. Oh. I'm sorry. As Archie Mayo would say, the bell is tolled. Huh? It was Robert Alder, and that's a pretty tough one. They now have $15. Okay, now how much are you going to try of the $15? 15. Let's take a 10. You're going to 10? Sh- she says 10. $10. Who played composer Jerome Kane until the clouds roll by? Oh, that's a shame. It was Robert Walker. And they wind up with $5. <laughs> Well, thanks and good luck. Now, in just one minute, our last couple will play You Bet Your Life, and then we know who gets the $1,000 question. But at the moment, I'd like you to listen to this. Now, the 
I will soon know who's going to earn the most money and get the chance at the $1,000 question. George, who's ahead so far? Well, the health inspector and the housewife with $5 are leading. Our final couple doesn't know the secret word is ink, since they've been in a waiting room off stage. Perhaps they'll say it. Just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected a cross-country bus driver and a roller coaster operator. And here they are, Mr. Bernard Sampson and Mr. Robert Sewell. Meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, gentlemen, to You Bet Your Life. Mr. Sampson, uh, you're the uh, bus driver, huh? Which bus do you drive, uh, Bernard? Pacific Greyhound Lines. Mr. Sewell and Mr. Robert Sewell, huh? Well, what do you do? I'm a roller coaster operator. Where do you do your operating, uh, Bob? An Ocean Park Pier. Just where, where, where is Ocean Park Pier? It's an ocean park. You don't get around much, do you? Huh? Bus driver, are you still here blocking the traffic? I'm still here. Where are you from? Chicago. Uh, yeah, are you married? Yes, I'm married. How'd you meet your wife? I met on a Pacific Electric train going to work. All the way downtown, I just kept looking at her, and she didn't say nothing to me, and I didn't say nothing to her. And uh... Oh, you had a very interesting conversation. <laughs> well, uh, before I got off, I asked her for her phone number, and... I told her I'd write the number down and she'd give it to me and she gave me pretty fast and just about the right and I ran out of ink. And I... Now, where were we when you spilled ink all over the joint? Huh? <laughs> so, you ran out of ink and I uh, wrote down her number on the, with a pencil and a piece of paper and I called her up and told her I was going to marry her. And uh, here I am. And since that time, you've been riding buses, huh? Well, I'm pushing the gray on down the highway. What time does your bus stop in, at Long Beach, uh, driver? I don't stop in Long Beach. Well, what have you got against Long Beach? <laughs> <laughs> Let's take another ride on the roller coaster operator. Just what do you what do you do on your job, Mr. Sewell? Oh, I release the brake levers. <laughs> That's all you do, just pull the lever? Don't you do anything else? Oh, no, we load the people in the train first. And what do you do while the coaster is going uh, over the track? Oh, I just stand there and wait for it to come back down. <laughs> I mean, you just stand there and hope it comes down. Is that what you mean? Oh, it'll come back all right. You're pretty despondent about the whole thing, aren't you? <laughs> well, what do you do if the thing doesn't come down? How do you get it down? Well, it's always came back. <laughs> well, I can't shake your story, can I? Huh? Well, if it didn't come down, what would you do? Put an ad in the paper or something? <laughs> Lost one roller coaster? <laughs> Now, how long a trip is it on your booby trap, huh? Seven-eighths of a mile around. Seven-eighths of a mile. And how long does it take to cover that distance? It takes a minute and 45 seconds. And how much does it cost for the ride? 25 cents. For seven-eighths of a mile, 25 cents. Huh? It's pretty expensive, isn't it? Bus driver, how far can I go on your bus for a quarter? Mm, about 12 and a half miles. In which direction? Any way you want to go. Okay, up. What time does your bus stop at Anaheim? I don't stop in Anaheim. What have you got against Anaheim? <laughs> Operator, how do you explain your exorbitant rates uh, compared with the bus company? Well, we have a very thrilling ride there on the coaster. It takes you up and down and around, a lot of twists and curves. That's a lot of fun. <laughs> A lot of thrills, huh? Lots of thrills. It's evident you've never been on a bus. <laughs> Say, Greyhound, what time is your bus stop at uh, Santa Barbara? About 3.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> oh, you stop at Santa Barbara, <laughs> eh? What have you got against Santa Barbara? <laughs> By the way, those roller coasters look pretty rickety to me. How, how, do, how do you know they won't collapse? Oh, they're inspected each day. Mm -hmm. Who inspects them? I do. <laughs> the building inspector comes around once a month. Mr. 
So will you say you inspect them? Yes, sir. How? Well, I'll walk over the track and see that everything's all right. You go up over the top and all that stuff? Yes. Then the building inspector comes around once a month. You make him ride it. Over. it. No, he won't ride it. He won't ride it. No. That building inspector is no fool, you know. Right? Now, let's play you bet your life. If you can beat our other two couples in the quiz, you'll get a crack at the $1,000 question. Can't tell you how much they won, but George is off stage to remind our listeners. The health inspector and the housewife are ahead with $5. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. What question category did you select? Latin songs. Latin songs. Here's your first question. You have 20 bucks. How much are you going to try? Ten. Jerry Fielding will supply the music. You name the song. Okay, Jerry. Amapola. Amapola is right. And they're off to a good start with $30. Remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. Now you have $30. How much are you going to try? $30. How are you going to try? Here we go. Give me the title of this Latin melody. <laughs> what do you say? Take a stab at it. Star eyes, isn't it? No, no, I, I'm sorry. It's, it, you were close. It's green eyes. Green eyes. I'll give you one last chance to get rich. Answer this one, I'll pay you $10. What oceans have the same names as the Atlantic and Pacific Tea Company? <laughs> Atlantic, Atlantic and Pacific. Atlantic and Pacific is right. <laughs> and that means the health inspector and the housewife with $5 get the chance of the $1,000 question. Whee! And here's the winning couple, Groucho, the housewife and the man from the Department of Public Health. Are you ready to try for $1,000, eh? Good luck, and I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you, so talk it over thoroughly and no help in the audience, please. I, I hope you've been reading your newspapers for the past couple of years. Careful now. Who was the Secretary General of the United Nations? Are you ready? What's the answer you two have decided upon? We've decided upon Trig V. Lee. Trig V. Lee is absolutely right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You win $1,000. You had the right answer, so you win $1,000. What are you going to do with all that money? I'm going to improve the health of my children. <laughs> we all need devil work. <laughs> What are you going to do with your money, Al? I think I'll look at... Clean up look, the city? No, I'll look at the new car. Congratulations to both of you. Thank you, Groucho. You'll Bet Your Life is a John Goodell production, transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Bob Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. <laughs> <laughs> 